This film is so beyond the word epic that I actually can't think of a word for it. Epic in scale, epic in ambition, epic in emotion, epic in action. It's just huge. It is a huge movie. And I think there is something for everyone. I think we're going to take you on an insane ride. I got a text from a filmmaker that I've worked with, Edgar Wright, who said, George Miller wants to talk to you. And immediately, just my whole body kind of electrified. And I was like, oh, OK. Uh, what about he says, George Miller wants to talk to you. And I was like, OK, I'll, I'll talk to George Miller. Um, and we had a FaceTime, first and foremost, where we just kind of got to know each other. He was asking me all of these, I guess not terribly cryptic now that I'm here, but at the time felt slightly cryptic. How good I was on a motorcycle. Was I willing to do my own stunts? Um, and then just sort of said, listen, we're doing the, the prequel. Um, to Fury Road, we're telling the story of Furiosa, and would you mind auditioning for it? And I want you to do a speech uh, from the movie Network, and that speech is, I, I guess you would call it, mad as hell. I was thrilled because first and foremost, I am a huge fan of this franchise, and so just the idea of being able to jump in and be a part of this world was massive for me. In this film, you will see Furiosa being stolen as a child, which is something that we know in the mythology. However, you see everything that has caused her to become the person that you all now know. And that journey is wild and epic. <laughs> you get to explore the wasteland in a way that you didn't, you haven't been able to before because we have the scope and we have the length of time. So in terms of world building, yeah, it's a, it's a very large scale. I was really excited by the physical nature of this job. I wanted to do as much as I was allowed to do and George was really um, supportive of that. So I started training a year before we started filming the movie. The unbelievable beauty of the double rig is quite extraordinary, like that, driving around in that is pretty unbelievable. I will also say that the Valiant, the Valiant was the first car that I drove in the movie, so that's got a really special place in my heart. I do like the Cranky Black though. The Cranky Black, you've got to, this is where I get a bit most ahead about it. The gears don't necessarily always just land, so you have to be really on it, but um, it's a great car and there are teeth inside of that car which I really like. <laughs> we would have discussions very early on about action not necessarily being for action's sake in this movie, but for it to tell you something about the character. So it was a way of getting to know the characters through an action sequence. Um, I'd never thought about it that way before. I thought that was incredible. Her journey, her commitment to it, and her absolute refusal to go down is something that we can all learn from. My hope in this film for young women is that they realize that you are stronger than you think you are, you have more power than you think you have, and you can do a lot with that. It's just consistent pressure, but we're gonna get there. Just come on this ride with us, you will not be disappointed. If you liked Fury Road, you're gonna lose your mind watching this film. Um, this is Fury Road on steroids, I think. You know, George Miller is a master. He steps it up each time, and I saw things in this that I haven't seen on any set. Uh, so I strap in. I think it is exhilarating and intense and uh, <laughs> and furious, but there's a depth to it um, and a detail which is unique again to the rest of the Mad Max franchise. I think for most Australian actors, it's sort of the pinnacle or a dream of, of sorts, you know, to be uh, working in a Mad Max film, George Miller film. This film is about Furiosa trying to get home uh, and Dr. Dementis is in her way and, and keeps dismantling that idea and that hope and that dream and, uh, it, you know, they go to war over it. It was George's idea to have the, the shape of the nose, the prosthetic nose, I think just to 
have a separation from who I was, but also he envisioned um, the sort of Roman statues, Greek statue carving, uh, you know, that you'd see in a museum somewhere. Uh, there was a sort of mes messiah quality to who he was. I was listening to, um, to, to sort of the, the horse races and the, oh, they're coming down the track and he's going to the outside and I don't know. And there was something about the kind of nasality of that that rang in my ear, um, which started to indicate the character. My grandfather used to have this, oh, how are you going? Yeah, good, sort of, you know, very out there kind of quality voice, but from a, a time, a very Australian, but Australian kind of 30, 40 years ago. It was quite, quite a strain in my throat to kind of put it up in there all the time, especially in the louder scenes when I'm, when I'm yelling or um, having to project. Um, but it, it just felt like someone that was wound up tight and tense. So I believe there's an immaturity to Dementis. That, that there's a sort of a, a, a wild, stubborn kid at times who is stamping his feet and he wants this, but you know, he's not just stamping his feet, he's tearing people apart. And, um, but I believe that immaturity and that childlike sort of wildness comes from an abusive background. He's a product of the wasteland. I think everyone there has suffered to such an extent due to the brutal nature of, of everything that is in, in your experience that you can't not be hardened and changed and warped and and I think he uh, due to probably a very violent background some horrific sort of tragedy when he was younger um, I think he lost all sense of hope that there was something better and, and an alternative to this and you brought such a such an intelligence to it such a depth such a, a passion and intensity there, there was a burning sort of rage within Furiosa that um, and you felt so strongly about. He's such a kind individual that you have every single person on set wanting to show up and and give a hundred percent you know um, there's no sort of reluctance about it because you feel like ah oh, look I might be tired and exhausted but I don't want to let him down you know because I want him to be uh, I want him to be proud of me you know the, the, you, I don't know he has a very unique quality. Most people you see in positions of, of, of leadership and people who are in charge, there's a sort of intimidating dominant sort of force there. Um, whereas he comes at it from the other side of the coin, which is of, of kindness and openness and um, collaboration. I'm sure people will be blown away by the spectacle of it because uh, it's just, it's no, I don't think anybody does it better. The Praetorian's sort of official surtitle is is Immortan Joe's bodyguards, but uh, they are branched off according to vocation. So Jack's role has really chiefly become driving the war rig because it's it's something he does the best, and it's it's a particularly high stakes uh, part of the Citadel's machinations. Praetorian Jack, his whole life really is within the Citadel and the world of the Citadel and that includes the bullet farm and the gas farm and this, this endless kind of circular or triangular journey between, <clears throat> between the places. Um, I, I think there's echoes of, of Max in him, but you feel like he's an outsider who is institutionalized in a sense. He doesn't he doesn't know what an out what it would actually be like to, to be on the outside. He's kind of on the outside. He's an outsider on the inside. Was how I saw him. He meets Furiosa, and he immediately recognizes some spark of of an original individual in her. Not even a spark. The embodiment of that. Um, and she has this whole idea about somewhere she's going to go uh, and he initially refers to that as a mirage um, when they're making this deal, this pact, he says, you know, in a few years time we're free to chase mirages. In the arc of their relationship he comes to have a kind of faith um, in this place that she's heading to and uh, a wish to help her find it and at one point that was very much about him 
wanting to be there with her. Um, and then towards the end, by the time we started filming, we were talking about it more as like a guy wanting to walk a girl home, almost, in some very simple way. They're not trying to save the world. They're trying to, they're trying to find a different world, you know? And I, I just thought there was something interesting about, there was something very honest about the way they have to exist within this system they're in. And there's a real vulnerability in her strength, and there's a real strength in her vulnerability. And I, I, for what I've seen of it is heartbreaking, and I think that's, everything you could ask of that journey. She's been trained by her mother since she was born to get all she can out of every situation, get all she can out of every physical thing. Because if you don't do that, what's the point of having all of the, the lusciousness, all of the greatness from the green place? She would basically be wasted if she didn't know all of this beautiful detail and all of this really evolution because all of these people have evolved to know how to be resourceful because if they don't then they've they waste stuff. I'm a Mad Max fanatic I think you need to know that okay my whole life I've wanted to be in one of these movies I've grown up with them uh, as an Australian male and an Australian actor it's like this is Valhalla for me. We are at Furiosa and this is the first time that this universe has been told in the form of an epic. And that's never been done before by Dr. George. So this covers approximately sort of 15 to 18 years in a character's life, let's say 15. And it has the sweep of an epic. And you don't need to see Mad Max, Mad Max 2, Beyond Thunderdome, Fury Road to go and see a post-apocalyptic epic. So it wasn't a matter of suddenly going, oh, right, I've got to get in the headspace of the Morton. We know who this guy is. We've seen Fury Road. The, the flavours that we get of him, though, in Furiosa is you see far more almost like, if I could put it this way, a corporate CEO under a lot of pressure. You know, we, within Fury Road, we're seeing a guy who is infuriated that he's been betrayed and that his wives have been taken from him. That's his, the thrust of him. This is a very different side to him, which is a guy who is trying to juggle an empire, keep the machine moving, and trying to make decisions that will preserve the empire that he has created. A character like Risdale, um, you can be flamboyant, you can be grisly, you can be nasty, um, you can go anywhere with a guy like that because he's a bit of a shapeshifter because he's, as I say, worming his way to, through a power structure. The second I started doing a scene with her, I was like, that's Furiosa. The transformation is just incredible. It was literally, that is Furiosa from Fury Road just dialed back a little younger. And it was like, I unbelievable. And after our first take together with me as the Immortan, I just took her aside and said, you're incredible. You're an absolutely incredible actor. This is gonna click, this is gonna pop. And she's like, oh really? And I'm like, yeah, man, this is awesome. We're cooking with gas now. Let's just bring it to the boil and let's make some magic. And she was, she's a phenom. She really is uh, one of those actors who there's Oscars in her future. The world is hers, you know? And she, she carries this whole film. Working with Chris, it's kind of like working with a professional athlete. Um, he's incredibly focused and he pushes himself again and again and again and he drills himself. And there are a lot of crew members on Furiosa who had worked with Chris on a couple of the Thor movies um, who said that they've never seen him so focused ever. This is a film with spectacular action, spectacular performances and spectacular spectacular special effects <laughs> it's spectacular in every way he is the one point of contact with a world that has vanished um, so and, uh, and he finds himself in Dementis's band he, uh, he's been he was captured by members of his band uh, and became uh, a valued member of Dementis's band because unlike anyone else in his band, he is not 
a killer or a fighter. Uh, he's a storyteller. He, but a story, he, and he knows everything. Well, almost everything. And he's trying to remember everything or almost everything. But he can talk about motorbikes, he can talk about battles, he can talk about historic events, he can talk about physics, chemistry. He's the depository, he's all knowledge that has remained on this earth and it's there in his costume, in his mind, and on his skin. I see young Furiosa as possibly a, a candidate for, to pass on my, the knowledge I have. And so that at least some history, some of the understanding of what the world is can be passed on. He involves every single person that he works with in the process, in his process. And so it, it gives you a wonderful sense of ownership of your work even though it's, it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful collaboration. Mary Jabas's role in The Green Place is she is the leader of The Green Place. She, although the way I worked with Mary in The Green Place was that she considers herself as an equal to the villagers, essentially. And she's, she's a part of it as everyone else is. And although she's the leader, she still plays a role in the community like, like everyone does. They were three very defining things about Mary that I had to explore as an actor to find her, essentially, is that she is a leader, she's a mother, and she's a warrior. So she is the leader of the Green Place, she's a mother to Furiosa, and I think using my imagination, she's had to have experienced a few situations that might have been unkind to make her the warrior that she is. The incredible Alila Brown plays young Furiosa, Mary Jabassa's Furiosa, for the scenes they have together. And Alila is so much cooler than me and so much more experienced than me. And I learnt an incredible amount from her through this whole experience. She's incredible. She's this abundant, energized, fearless, fun orb of energy that moves through the set so freely. And I think she brings so much laughter and light to everyone on set when she's there and she makes everyone feel super special. I think every single character in the wasteland is trying to survive in whatever way they can. I actually, I, I, the, the truest essence of human life is to survive. We're all surviving. Everything we do here on earth in real life is to survive. Some in the best ways, some in, in, for, in unfortunate ways, but I, our essence as humans on earth is to survive in a way, but the wasteland is obviously so much more dire and the situations are far more intense.